I am the Reverend James Anderson. I pastored this church from 1771 until my death in 1793. And having been dead for a little over 200 years now, it's not very often that I get a chance to preach. So I'm, I'm grateful uh, for this annual opportunity to speak uh, with this congregation again. Let us begin this morning with prayer. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we give you thanks for the rich history of this church here at Middletown, for the way that you have worked through this congregation and this community, and for the way that we hope to see you work through us into the future. But Lord, we invite you to be present here among us this morning. Pour out your spirit upon us and open our hearts and our minds to you today, that we might hear from you, that we might be changed by the working of your Holy Spirit and sent out into this world to live for you and to serve you. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, the scripture which Ms. Zane read for us uh, just a little while ago is really a hymn. Uh, it was a song which, which Moses led uh, the people of Israel in singing just after they had passed through the waters of the Red Sea. And I, I want you to think for a moment about those Israelites, the chosen people of God who had just spent at least four generations in slavery in the land of Egypt. The land of Egypt, which was at that time what today you would call a world superpower. They were the mighty military power of their day. No one wanted to face the Egyptians on the field of battle. And here is this group of Israelite slaves who Moses comes and riles up, convinces them that God is calling them out of their slavery. And if you know the story, God visits upon, uh, upon Egypt ten plagues. And finally, the Pharaoh says, fine, have it your way, go. Just, just leave this country and leave us alone. And so the Israelites head out. Now, they, they take with them quite, quite a lot of, of treasure from the Egyptians, who essentially pay them to leave. But as they make their way out of Egypt, Pharaoh changes his mind. And I just want you to imagine for a moment that that you are in this group of Israelite slaves. You have no training in battle. You have no weapons for battle. And you find yourselves up against a great body of water with the fearsome Egyptian army bearing down upon you. And the word tells us that, that they cried out to Moses and to God, why have you brought us out here simply to die in the desert? But God, but God shows up on their behalf the people of God, the people that he has chosen, he shows up and he parts the waters of the Red Sea and the Israelites walk across this great body of water on dry land. And they get to the other side and Pharaoh thinks, well, we've got them now. We'll just cross behind them. But as soon as the Egyptian army makes their way into the sea. The waters come together. And this, this great Egyptian army is drowned. And the people of God are saved. 
and they sing to God. Because the victory was his. They were no match for Egypt. They were no match for this superpower. But God, God was more than enough. While I pastored this church, these colonies, these American colonies, which had come here seeking religious freedom, which had come here to be free to worship God, entered into a war with England at a time when England was the world superpower. And we, the American colonies, had no military force. We had no organized military. We had hunting rifles and farm implements. But we were no match for England. This weekend, Brandywine Battlefield, which is just down the road, celebrates their 240th anniversary. It, it's kind of strange to me that you all celebrate battles in such a way, especially one like the Brand Battle of Brandywine, which we lost miserably. In fact, a few days afterwards, our own Persifer Frazier, who is seated in the back here this morning, was taken captive by the British and held in prison in Philadelphia. But we lost that battle. In fact, if you read the history of the war, it seemed as though we lost most of the battles. We were totally outmatched. And there were several times throughout the war when General Howe, the British general, if, if he had just followed our troops and wiped them out, the war would have been over. But for some reason, each time he was distracted or he decided to try something else, and we were spared. But the Battle of Brandywine was probably the largest battle, believe it or not, of the entire war. Nearly 30,000 troops involved in that battle. A little over 15,000 British, a little less than 15,000 of our American troops. And the vast majority of our troops were either killed or injured. And if you read the histories, it says after the battle, the Americans withdrew to Chester. Well, this land upon which we stand today was part of Chester then. And many of those dead and wounded were brought right here to this property. It was a sad day and yet and yet our troops were not deflated in fact they thought well considering who we're up against we didn't lose too badly but if you look at that battle and you look at most of the battles of the war you you have to think how did we ever win there is no reason that we should have won but we believed that we won not through our own strength, not through our own abilities, not through our own resources, but like the Israelites, because God was on our side. And the victory was his, not ours. Because there's really no other way to explain it. 
There's no, there's no reason that we should have won. There's no reason that we should still be a country today except that we had come here seeking freedom to worship God. And God honored those who truly sought him. But what does that have to do with you and I today? Well, my question to you today would be, if God stood with the people of Israel when they faced an insurmountable obstacle like Egypt, if God stood with the American colonies when, when they faced an insurmountable obstacle like Great Britain, what can God not do for you? What battle can he not give you victory over? And we all, we all face battles. At the very least, we, we face the battle with ourselves, with, with sin, with that desire to do those things that we know are not good for us. And certainly, in the end, we all face that insurmountable world power of death. And yet Paul writes these words in 1 Corinthians chapter 15. Behold, I show you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we shall all be changed. In a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trump, for the trumpet shall sound and the dead shall be raised incorruptible, and we shall be changed. For this corruptible must put on incorruption, and this mortal must put on immortality. So when this corruptible shall have put on incorruption, and this mortal shall put on immortality, then shall be brought to pass the saying that is written, death is swallowed up in victory. O death, where is thy sting? O grave, where is thy victory? The sting of death is sin, and the strength of sin is the law. But thanks be to God, which give us, giveth us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Whatever battle you face, whatever obstacle you face, if you will seek the Lord, if you will trust in Him, He will give you the victory. And when our earthly time is done, and we pass from this earthly life, he has promised us victory in the life to come. It is not a victory that we win on our own. It is not a victory that we win by our own wisdom or knowledge or skill or talent. The victory is the Lord's. And with the Lord, there is nothing we cannot face. Let us pray together. Heavenly Father, we give you thanks that you love us more than we even love ourselves. You are our creator. You formed us with purpose and intention and purpose. And Lord, we ask that you would help us to, to begin to understand your amazing love for us. That we might turn to you 
at every moment in our lives. Whatever obstacle we face, whatever battle we face, whatever difficulty we face, whatever health concern we face, that we might turn it over to you. That like the Israelites facing certain defeat and our own American colonies facing certain defeat, that we would turn our eyes to you and allow you to give us the victory for your honor and your glory. And in Jesus' name, amen.